the organizers to invite me here to present about um, a specific part of the access project. Um, we've been developing a heritage significance assessment system to evaluate the impacts of retrofit measures. Um, I'm Carsten Herman, um, I work for Historic Scotland, I'm advising on sustainable building conservation, and the presentation was prepared together with Dennis Rodwell, an internationally working heritage consultant. And yes, in my talk, I will use terms like adaptation, mitigation, <laughs> retrofit. <laughs> um, my presentation is about a conceptual method to systematically assess impacts of retrofits on heritage significance. But can be energy related retrofits or retrofits not related to energy efficiency. Um, it's a methodology developed for the Ephesus Research Project funded by the European Union. Um, I will Firstly, give a bit of more broader context to set the scene, then briefly outline the Ephesus Research Project itself, and then dip into the details of the assessment system. Um, I work with Story Scotland, the government agency of the Scottish Government, um, and we are safeguarding and promoting Scotland's historic environment. We do it in various roles, I've listed some of them, and um, the last bullet point is the area I work in that is researching and advising on heritage conservation and energy efficiency. Um, we are an agency, I said, but we are actually going to merge later on this year with the Royal Commission for the Ancient and Historical Monuments of Scotland, forming a new public body, Historic Environment Scotland. <coughs> so we will be soon something which English heritage was until not too long ago. <laughs> um, as part of our roles, we are looking after buildings in state care. One of them is Thrace Castle in Dumfries and Galloway. And obviously, we are seeing the impacts of, of weather in general, but also of climate change. Um, this castle is, is the white dot on this aerial photograph that's located on the River Dee, so close, close to water anyway. But this picture was taken in um, January last year and showing severe flooding. And I think we can see more weather impacts, more climate change impacts occurring on our buildings, making our life more difficult. We need to spend more resources on simply keeping up our properties and it will cost us more money. And as Neil already pointed out, um, we will need to discuss what we can actually afford in the future. A nearby property we're looking after is called Maiden Castle. Um, essentially what you're seeing here is the wall course which remains standing. The, the facing stones have long gone, have been used to build a nearby village. So how do you preserve um, a ruin like this um, on the Scottish west coast with its nice climate and um, wind driven rain. Um, it's already difficult and climate change happening now will not make it, make it easier for us. So there will be discussion about which monuments we need to let go, we might just record. And Historic Scotland is doing quite a lot of digital recording nowadays. Um, we might just bury or essentially just let it go. So it will be an interesting discussion to come. Um, the model discussion for my talk today, I would rather look at adaptation, uh, sorry, at mitigation and adaptation, um, and the context there is the carbon emissions. What do we need to do to actually minimize the impacts of future climate change, so to make the scenario we are looking forward to not worse? And various government policies have set climate change reduction targets, and Scotland is actually having quite challenging ones. And we are looking at, at achieving 42% um, carbon emission reductions, or actually greenhouse gas emission reductions, by 2020. Um, and carbon emissions are related to, to producing energy from burning fossil fuels. And the pie chart on the right side um, shows you which sectors of the UK energy is consumed. And the big chunk highlighted at the bottom left of the pie chart is housing, that's the energy used for housing in the UK. If you add to this, oops, if you add to this, whatever, the orange chart, um, that is commercial and public administration, you, you kind of see how big the chunk of energy consumed is within what, what you could call buildings, or related to buildings. So energy consumption in building matters if you want to reduce our carbon emissions. <laughs> and 
quite a lot of the energy we use in our domestic building stock um, is actually from space heating. It's used for space heating. That is about 60 percent, and it has been 60 percent for the last 40 years. <coughs> so we are not really making reductions in in the amount of, or the ratio we are using for space heating. So what do we need to do? to actually achieve our climate emission targets. What does need to happen in the built environment? It has been estimated that we need to make our buildings 40% more energy efficient. And it has been shown in reports that this could actually be achieved. But it has also been said that 87% of the buildings standing and in use in 2050 will are the buildings which are already around today. So it's not just about new buildings. In fact, it's mostly about retrofitting or improving, working with our existing buildings. Um, and this graph shows you the age distribution of UK residential buildings. Yes, we're adding to our building stock, so the new build, um, the newer construction is essentially additional. Um, there is a bit of reduction in 1960s to 75 buildings, replacing quite recent building stock. But everything before the 19, um, 1950s, 1960s, um, is pretty stable, is with us and will stay, most likely will stay with us for the next hundred years. What are we going to do with it? You might wonder what all this has to do with building conservation and um, yeah, heritage significance. Well, if, if your concept of historic places is limited to monuments, you might say, well, that doesn't really matter to, to a monument. But then the, the concept of, of historic places has developed over the last decades. And at least for me, I include lots of historic buildings, all the buildings under another term, historic buildings, or historic places. Um, only 3% of our building stock are listed. There's a bit more in conservation areas, but generally about 20% of building stock is older than 100 years. And I would argue that this building stock uh, adds significantly to a cultural identity and placemaking and should therefore be considered of significance and treated with at least some degree of, of building conservation. And this is the starting point for the Ephesus Research Project. Um, it's a European project researching energy efficiency in historic districts. Um, we've got 23 partners from 13 countries um, and started in September 2012 and runs until um, summer next year. Um, funded through the European Union Seventh Framework Program for Research, Technological Development, Demonstration, um, with a bit more than six million euros. And as part of the project, we've got um, seven case studies in historic cities or city districts, um, one of which is in Glasgow. And Ephesus has three main objectives. One is to develop new technologies and um, systems specifically aiming at retrofitting historic buildings and districts. Um, we are also doing research, um, sorry, we are also doing um, dissemination of our research outcomes from conferences to workshops. Um, we are developing training courses for professionals and students. But what I'm looking, um, looking at specifically in this talk is a, develop, uh, is a decision support system software tool which we are developing. And this software tool aims at professionals and is, is meant to help, help these professionals make informed decisions. It is not providing the answers, it is not making the decisions itself, it is just a support system. Um, it is location specific, so it does just give you generic answers, but it is also meant to work at least across Europe, possibly beyond. Therefore it's a flexible and transparent framework, it will be a web-based application um, and we hope that it can be used in conjunction with other building simulations. So in a nutshell, what does the software do? You've got two forms of data inputs, which you feed into the software, which does a bit of magic, and then outputs a priority list of retrofit measures, which should be particularly suitable for a given or select um, historic district or a group of buildings. The two inputs, uh, forms of inputs. One is geolocation geo specific. Um, and it will include um, 
3D data, for example, um, spatial data like climate data, type of construction, age of buildings, energy use, but also needs to, inf to include some form of heritage data in some way. The, the second um, input will be a database of generic retrofit measures. And again, it will give you, or it will contain information about costs, durability, how they improve energy and performance, and so on. And also, this will need to include some form of heritage data. And once you have this, you can feed it into the, the software tool, which uses six modules to assess um, the data. Um, two, two of these modules is indoor environment and fabric compatibility, so looking at the physical, chemical issues. And we are assessing embodied energy and operational energy to see how energy performance improves. We've got one module on economy to calculate costs, payback periods. But then we also got a sixth module which, which looks just at cultural significance because Ephesus is not just about retrofitting buildings or districts, it's about historic buildings, historic districts. Just two slides on the two um, inputs in general. The, the data for um, the spatial data model um, can be point cloud data, can be from scans added with, with um, more metadata tech to it. <coughs> and quite a lot is already existing or is just in development. Um, we are also developing as a second input the tech repositories, so databases for generic retrofit measures, which give you all sorts of information. So that will be part of, of the software we are producing. So how does the heritage component of this software tool actually work? Um, I said we've got two inputs, and both inputs need to have some form of heritage data included in them. For the location-specific um, information, we call this heritage significance evaluation. And we'll start with that in a minute, and then later on say something about how we look at the retrofit measures, how we assess retrofit measures. And then you can take both of these inputs into some balancing process and come out with a priority list of from a heritage perspective, which might be suitable measures for a specific building. Welcome to Edinburgh. This is Charles Square, um, one of the corner buildings on the north side, and it's category A listed. It's a conservation architect who, who might want to improve the energy performance of this building. It's, it's great to know it's category A listed, but then what does that actually tell me, for example, if I want to improve the performance of the windows? Can I replace them? Can I not replace them? Do replacements need to look the same as the old ones? Are minor deviations acceptable or not? Do we need to use the same materials? So listing categories or grading as, as used in England Wales um, is not really helpful for, for retrofit processes, for retrofit decision making. What I want to know is on a building component basis, what is the importance of different building components? And essentially, we are doing what conservation plans and conservation statements often do. We are starting to identify the character defining elements of the building. Um, and you, thereby, you can, can build a catalog of different categories from doors, roofs, walls, windows, and so on, um, which you can assess. But you can also add um, elements. We, we said we might include public spaces, roofs, scapes, and wisdoms. We might also include ground archaeology. And if you say this is still too crude to do an assessment, you could, you could think of expanding this and looking at, say, not just the external walls, but looking at the principal, at the external walls of the principal facade compared to the re elevation of the side walls. So the system is quite, quite flexible and quite open for further development. So once I've got all these assessment locations, building components, um, how do I assess them? We thought we need three types of assessments, visual, physical, and spatial. I want to know, is the appearance of the material important? Do I need to keep the material as it is? Can I, can I replace it with something different? Or does it need to be exactly the same? And we, we 
opted for another one, another category calling spatial. So can we change spatial configurations, spatial detail? And I will give some examples in a minute. So if I, if I just take an ornate plaster ceiling, 16th century plaster ceiling, um, how would I assess that? We've, we've said we, we are using a um, four-graded system, starting with, with um, level zero for negative for neutral significance, and then going to level four, exceptional outstanding significance. So you might say with this um, ornate ceiling, it's so important, so unique, it needs to be preserved as it is, and you shouldn't be doing anything to it, so you might give it a level four. And a, a gypsum plasterboard ceiling in the same building, you might not care much about, so just say it's a level zero. And some traditional plaster work might be old, might be nice to keep, um, but then the overall scheme of things, not that important, so you might just opt for one. So you've got a grading system to actually decide what is more important than other things. And that way you get a catalog of significance which describes the building, which defines which areas are more important than others. That is the location-specific information. The other input we are, we are needing is the um, tech repositories. And the heritage data we are putting in there uh, needs to somehow correlate to what we've been assessing in the building. And just to give an example here, this is solar roof photovoltaic panels. And the tech repositories could include three types of these. Say, one panel is mounted on top of the existing roof finishes. The second one is set in line with the existing roof finishes, essentially replacing them. And the third one is something called solar slates. So it's mini panels replacing the slates and essentially mimicking the slates. And if I did an assessment or de defined the impact of heritage significance of these three different types of solar panels, I could say that the first one has some visual impact, because I can, I can see it sitting on top of the original roof. And the physical impact is pretty minimal. The original slates are being retained as they are. I mean, there might be some fixing, so I just give it a one rather than a zero. Um, and there's some spatial impact. Yes, it sits proud of the of the existing existing roof line. So maybe a value of two. Whereas with the inline panel, I can go through a similar process saying, well, it's visually quite outstanding. Um, physically, it replaces the originals, so it's very detrimental. Um, spatially, it sets in line with, with the roof line, so no impact there. And then I can do a similar assessment um, for the um, solar slates, which visually fit in very nicely, but actually replace the original material. So now that I've got these two impacts, or well, now that I've got these two inputs, the heritage significance inputs, I can feed them into the software and can do some balancing. And that might just look like this, where, where I can take one particular location, one particular assessment type and say, okay, what did you say was, was the significance, visually, spatially, physically? And what would the impact of a retrofit measure be? And a computer can now start running through this and, and deep, um, spitting out afterwards what might be the solutions particularly suitable for a specific building in a specific context. Just to illustrate that, um, with, with sticking with the solar panels, we've got two roofs here. The roof on the left-hand side um, is clearly visible from, from far afield. So I might say the visual importance is three, whereas the, the roof on the right example um, is hidden behind a power pit. It's quite flat roof, low, low pitch, so it's hardly visible from anywhere. So I might just give it visual, um, visual value of zero. I'm, I'm assuming in both cases that um, it's not original slates. Um, the one on the right-hand side is, is a quite new, not very nice looking, not very original looking. Um, slate, so let's just give it give it zero. If you had to replace it, you wouldn't have lost much. Maybe the one on the on the left hand side is a quite close match, not original maybe, but maybe give it a level one. So the user needs to input his assessment of a building or a district. 
as already said, we've got in the repository some data on the different, <coughs> different, um, of the different retrofit measures. And then the computer can start working through and define, well, in this particular situation, um, that's the left example with a, with a highly visible roof scale, um, putting, putting something um, very visible onto the roof as a solar panel would not be acceptable. But because we said earlier that um, the physical value is not that high, we, we could actually replace that with something which is not very, very visible. Maybe the, the mini panels, the solar slates. If we, if we had said in the significance assessment that the slates of, that the material itself is very important, we might have set the value to four, which would have said you need to keep the value as it is, uh, the material as it is, that would have then ruled out the solar slate. So, so we, we've developed a system where um, computer program and computer model can, can start helping you look at, at the various options of retrofit measures um, and assess them in a specific situation. And the heritage significance assessment is set as one of six modules in the access tool. The others will do similar assessments for other topics, so energy performance and what are issues of um, fabric compatibility. Would, would one of these measures, for example, be too heavy to be, be held by a normal, normal roof? And so on. And you, you eventually get, get a um, full, full idea of what measures might be suitable from an energy perspective, a cost perspective, an environmental perspective, but also from a heritage perspective, and get a list of retrofit measures from which you can select, and which, which you can use to investigate further. We've published more, published a paper on, on this assessment system with more details in the Journal of the Historic Environment. Um, that gives you more details also about how we think the system should work in an urban context, because the, the focus of that is, is on, on um, urban districts. I've skimmed over this in my talk here. Um, so we published um, summer last year, have a look there. And just to conclude, um, what it describes is the assessment system to, to evaluate the impacts of retrofit measures, energy related or not, on heritage significance. It was developed as part of the Ephesus project. And it is one of six assessment modules within the project's um, software tool. It is a framework system, a transparent and flexible framework system, which should help you make decisions. It doesn't make the decisions for you. And we are hoping that all the developed for the software tool in Ephesus, that this concept can also be used out with the project, and that you might be able to incorporate it into software developments, for example, for building information modeling, and that thereby discussion and assessments of heritage significance could become more mainstream in the retrofit <coughs> in general. Because if I'm not just considering as heritage my monuments, about 20% of the building stock, I think heritage discussion needs to be happening far more often in, in the retrofit of buildings than they do today. Our project um, is still running for another year and a bit, um, so if we would welcome any form of feedback on the project, the software tool, or particularly um, on our heritage assessment system. Thank you very much.